Hey, Redcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. With special thanks to Revenant, a nerd in war paint, Antonio Hernandez, Excelsior, Lima, Nathan Welch Jr., and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to the Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous Beta. As we continue our assault on the Grey Garrison. And I have to imagine at this point that uh, we must be getting close to the end. As we saw back in the prologue, uh, this place only has four levels. And we're about halfway through level three right now. So while I am not sure if we'll make it through the entire thing today... I do think we should at least be able to make it right up to the end. Um, from what I recall, the fourth level is basically just a corridor with a single room at the end. But um, I think the big concern is going to be the densely packed narrative. So we'll have to see if we have time for that once we actually get there. We will get started on that momentarily, but first we have to take care of these level ups. I did do a dry run off screen, and honestly our level up options are pretty straightforward this time. As usual, though, uh, I have set up a hard save, so if you have any suggestions about better ways we could build our characters, feel free to let me know in the comments below. First up, we have Creed, and he gets a bonus perk. Skills are pretty much set at this point, so we're not really changing anything there. Feet-wise, uh, I am still considering Tower Shield proficiency. But like I said before, that would essentially be trading our mobility for a couple of extra points of armor class. I will say, if this were a long-term campaign, if I was actually planning to play this out till the end, I would give that a lot more serious thought. But as it currently stands, we're probably better off just taking one of these other mount-oriented feats. Because we are right on the cusp of finally getting a proper mount at level 7. Given that the original concept for Creed was a mobile support tank... I guess we'll go with Mounted Shield. And that does still leave Tower Shields as a potential future option. Next we've got Sela, and she gets a new Mercy. And I already know exactly which one we're getting. She will be getting Mercy Diseased, which, uh, as it sounds, will essentially upgrade her Lay on Hands ability into a renewable source of removed disease. Uh, as we've seen in Wrath of the Righteous, they have really stepped up the potency and frequency of disease checks. Darren's kept it in check thus far, but that wand he's toting is definitely getting a bit light on charges. This will make it a bit easier to handle. Next, we've got Waljif, who gets a new rank in Danger Sense. No big deal. He picks up two new spells, and honestly, I'm not too worried about this. As an arcane caster, he can just transcribe whatever he needs from scrolls that we find or purchase as we continue adventuring. And we should be encountering some halfway decent scroll vendors once we get into Act 2 and 3. For now, I think we'll just stick with the basics. Um, nice, straightforward rogue stuff. We'll pick up Cat's Grace and Invisibility. Like I said, uh, I'm not really too fussed about it. Then we've got Ember, who picks up a new Hex. And we will actually be going a bit off script with her. Uh, to reflect some of the recent changes to our party loadout. My original plan here was to give her Cackle, uh, as we discussed in the past, but we really haven't gotten a whole lot of use out of Evil Eye just yet. I mean, that's my own fault, I just don't use it much. But um, I'm thinking while we will still want Cackle down the line, we can push it back to level 8. Given that we also just sidelined Camellia, and we still have her perfectly good Ring of Ice Plant, I think we'll go ahead and grab Ice Plant for Ember. Uh, that'll give her a quick plus two boost to her AC, plus an extra plus two from the ring. 
which in conjunction with Mage Armor, should bump her over 20 AC, uh, up to 22, I believe. The more recent patches have included some difficulty tuning, and there are a lot more enemies now, especially as you get into Act 2, who will go out of their way to target backliners, so... That 14 AC just uh, isn't going to cut it. Then she gets her first third level spell, and... Um, well, I would like to keep her primarily as an offensive caster, with Lightning Bolt and Stinking Cloud and Fireball, if we can get our hands on it. Um, I cannot resist the allure of heroism. Granted, Wolgif will eventually get access to it, but not for another level. So in the short term, I really feel like we could benefit from this. That's an hour-long buff, granting plus two to pretty much every substat that matters. Plus, you know, she really just leans on slumber 90% of the time anyway. Then we have Darren, who just gets more spells. Certainly nothing wrong with that. Uh, he gets his first third level spell as well. Though, in his case, it is important to remember that as an oracle, he'll also be gaining cure serious wounds and, I believe, neutralize poison for free as well. We've got a fair number of decent options here, but we do need to keep overlap in mind. Uh, Wolgif, for example, can cast Communal Resist Energy once he hits level 7. So I think we will go with Communal Delay Poison, which is one that Wolgif cannot learn. And finally, we have Lan, who picks up a new key power, again, no big deal, and a bonus feat, which is very nice. Now, with uh, key powers, when I was rebuilding our campaign, I obviously took Barkskin instead of Sudden Speed, and now we're here. Uh, our selection is still pretty mediocre, so I guess we'll just pick up Sudden Speed now. As for our bonus feat, obviously we do not want Many Shot or Rapid Shot. As previously established, neither of those is compatible with Flurry of Bows. And likewise, we don't want Deflect Arrows either, because a bow is a two-handed weapon, so it's not compatible with that feat. So that means it really comes down to either one of these defensive feats, or Improved Precise Shot. And honestly, I don't think there's any contest there. And that brings us to the Smilos, Kaiser and Layla. And they are just about as straightforward as it gets. They both get combat mobility. They both get some skill points. And that's pretty much it. They'll both be hitting their growth spurt at level 7, though. So uh, at that point, we will finally be able to ride these guys around. I figure early Act 2. I actually just did some test runs with a side party, just to make sure mounted combat is working. And yeah, it's um, about 90% functional. A bit rough around the edges, but still working just well enough to be a huge game changer for our current party. Skip the pleasantries. And that is pretty much it. Like I said, pretty straightforward, but uh, as always, feedback is welcome. That said... Let's hit the pause button real quick. I'll get our new spell slot set and rearrange our hot bars. And then we will return to the Assault on the Grey Garrison. We'll be right back. And we are back. Hot bars set, spell slot set, redundant backup save set. So let's get back to it. Keep your eyes open. There's another trap right there. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so this will take us back out. So that would take us back out to the balcony. Um, and this. Oh. Oh, okay, okay.
That buys us a surprise round. Let's see if we can take out that bard. Right, no full actions and a surprise round. Lovely. Now we just need to stem the tide. Obviously it's a good thing we took out that trap because otherwise that would have been right between us and them, which I think was deliberate. Well, aren't you clever? And here I was, feeling all proud of myself, too. Jerks. a whole cluster of sheer. Let's trim that rogue next. Get in there just yet. No glory without risk. There we go. down. Let's knock out that ranger next. Nice. Oh, and a bonus. I move through the Smilos. Weird. Okay, let's try this. It's not much, but that should be a minus one on their attack rolls. Doorway is getting a bit awkward. Get land to a better angle. Hmm. 
Thank you, Amber. Nice. Waljeff still killing it with that crossbow. And Darren's not too shabby either. Stunned. So we are pretty much done. Let's go ahead and get this guy out of the way. You know, I wasn't actually sure if Coup de Gras worked on stunned targets. Noted for the future. Hmm. Not much in here. So, what's the deal with that door we just came from? Oh, I see. So that door is actually plot locked. We can't even try to pick it. So how do we get in there? Hmm. All right, well, apparently we need a key, so I guess we will head in the other direction and keep an eye out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now that I'm looking at it, you can see that would actually lead us right past the collapsed section of flooring. So we have to crack that open if we want to get up to the top floor. Hey, who dragged all these barrels in here? Oh, my. Ha ha ha. A fine trick. Keep it up, and I might invite you to join our club. Ah, okay. That was Foul Snout, our old friend from way back in the Blackwing Library. Yeah, yeah, that was the imposter, the uh, undercover cultist who tried to burn the storyteller. Man, I, uh, I completely forgot about him. Well, I guess that uh, takes care of him. Shame about the library, though. The Collapse. Plus one Cold Iron Warhammer. On crit, all enemies within 15 feet must save or become prone. Wow. That? Well, that actually sounds really good. DC's not great, but it's not bad either. But it is on crit, which means just a 1 in 20 chance of proccing per attack. Hmm. I am tempted to try that out. I mean, I don't know if we'd ever actually proc that effect, but... 
You never know. I mean, I guess from a purely practical standpoint, it would be a net downgrade. We'd be giving up Ghost Touch in exchange for a 5% chance to occasionally knock someone down. Still fun, though. I suppose if we did swap them out, then that would free up Finian for someone else. Um, Seal is doing okay with that scimitar. But we could use a plus one ghost touch dagger for Wall Jeff. Or a plus one cold iron ghost touch longbow for Lan. Um, I will hold off for now, but there are some definite possibilities there. I'll have to think about that. This sacred image depicts a man dressed in a robe and holding a wand. The inscription reads, Zacharias of Canabras, the Holy Martyr. Another clue for that statue puzzle. That gets us back out to the balcony. Thank you. I'm glad I kept you guys alive. Mordant War Axe. Plus one Dwarven War Axe, extra 1d3 acid damage on hit. That's actually not that good. The uh, acid damage wouldn't affect most fiends. And um, because it's not cold iron, you wouldn't be able to penetrate their DR either, so you'd end up doing less damage. That is kind of a trap. I believe these are the notes the storyteller asked for. That's strange. We didn't get a quest pop-up when we picked those up. That is mildly concerning. Can't help but wonder if you actually do get stuff in the library here, if you don't blow it up like that. Not going to go back through to find out, though. More sheer carnage. Nothing we can't handle. I'm all ears. They're a lot less scary now that Sela can just freely cure disease. Distract them for me.
Just keep firing, I suppose. We don't need fancy tactics for this one. How could a demon destroy the gift of our goddess so easily? Are we not worthy of her blessing anymore? And we've got Sila, one step shy of a full-blown crisis of faith. Though to be fair, I still have a really hard time seeing her as lawful good. She just feels so chaotic. Swore that the herald of the goddess herself, the hand of the inheritor, appeared to him in a dream and showed the way with his staff and with his snow-white finger drew the word Chosen, written thus on its forehead. The Collegium was unanimous. The man before them was either a lunatic or a liar, but in either case, a blasphemer. The guise in which the hand of the inheritor appears is well known, skin dark of hue, and armed not with a staff, but with a shield and sword, as befits one of the goddess's servants. What is more, angels are typically literate, and surely they would use a nobler substance than tar for writing on the forehead of a true chosen one. The imposter was sentenced to a hundred lashes and exile, but prelate Halrun Shapak insisted on a public burning. Yeah, I'll bet he did. Speaking of which, where is he? He was supposed to help us with this assault, and we have, we have not seen any sign of him. I do actually kind of regret sparing Halrun. I, I want to see where his story goes. I'm really hoping he gets a redemption moment. But the more you read about him, the worse he sounds. I'm starting to think they might have laid it on a bit too thick with him, if they want anyone to not kill him. Looks like that would drop us into the room where we fought all those Cambions and the uh, Worm guys. The divine power of heaven seems to radiate from this painting. That might be the reason why it remained hidden from the demon's eyes and avoided desecration. Oh, okay. So I did find out what these do. Um, I commented on it last time, but apparently these are areas where the player can cleanse the corruption that accrues from resting outside of safe zones. It's something we haven't really run into much because, generally speaking, I went out of my way to go back to the Defender's Heart, which is, of course, a safe zone. Not useful for us, but nice to know what they do. I mean, we could rest, but um, then we'd be giving up our long-term haste spell. Hmm. I don't think that's anything. Yeah, so it's just this room. And then this big room here. Actually, we've got this space here, too. That is very conspicuous. We might have to double back and take another look at that bookshelf. But first, let's see what we've got here.
A new batch of living hearts for my rituals is finally here. Very good. My lord Discari, I offer this sacrifice to you. For Iomade. For Prelate Hullrun. Oh my. Better late than never, I suppose. And we do appear to be under stealth, so I guess this works out for us. Time to share your treasures. I think we're going to set up back here and let the Inquisitors go in first. Let's be careful here. I think that was a named character at the end of the table. Oh, wow. I have to say, I kind of expected more from these guys. Line set. Let's see how this goes. Excuse you. Well, it would appear that Inquisitors are deathly allergic to falchions. Duly noted. To be fair, I suppose anyone would be under the weather after a crit from a falchion, but... Let's be honest here, those guys had less than 30 hit points. They were in for a bad time no matter how this fight went. Oh, good. That didn't even get through his false life. <laughs> Locust Swarm. Well, that's probably not good. Does that just inconvenience you, or does it cause damage? Okay, so we have a cluster of rangers to deal with. And then we've got that named character in back somewhere, conjuring up swarms of insects. Let's 
go ahead and knock these guys out. Thank you, Lan. Impressive as always. Mobile damage failed. Got it. But we actually hit it back. Can we... Can we attack this? Okay, first things first. Let's have Creed lock down Jeslin. He's got our highest AC, so he should be able to tank her for a while. Twenty-two AC. We'll have the rest of our guys clear this side of the table. Okay, yeah, let's, um, let's knock out these swarms, too. I really thought those things would be more resistant to damage. I guess we'll start trimming the rangers too. Distract them for me. Hey, that works. Knocked out the swarm too. have got to go. Very nice. We actually got XP for that. That's not how summons normally work. No luck on the slumber, but that's fine. I think we've got this. Fights back. Into the fray. And thus falls another servant of Discari. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that guy. He really should have just snuck away when I wasn't paying attention. 
Oh, nicely spotted, Kaiser. I guess that solves the mystery of the empty space. And we are done. I can't help but notice the Inquisitor has just kind of uh, stopped doing things. And there he goes. Bye, I guess. I suppose, to be fair, they did soak those crits for us, so I can't be too hard on them. Crits happen. Nice, there's our key. So we had to come over here to uh, actually get to that final staircase. Very nice. Nothing terribly fancy, but I will certainly take it. Let's go ahead and parcel this stuff out real quick. dimension door. That'll come in handy. And then back here we have... A bunch of stuff we can't pick up. Bulky pick. Plus one heavy pick. Uh, on crit, enemy becomes fatigued for 1d3 rounds. No save. Again, um, I do find that appealing because it is a no save effect but only a 5% chance to proc per swing. You know, uh, if, if that thing was actually cold iron, I would be very tempted to go ahead and slot it on Creed anyway. I really like the idea, thematically, of uh, Creed running around with a heavy pick as his primary. Not to mention the chance for a quad damage crit. That is bananas. All right, let's go uh, crack this last door open. One room left. Glad to see we kept our tagalongs alive too. That is somewhat unexpected. What are you doing there, Lan? Ah, I see. I like to imagine that's Lan clearly marking the boundaries of his personal space. Once more under the breach, my friends.
Transformed Crusader. Ghouls? Or zombies, maybe. No DR, so ghouls. Let's have Ember cast some actual spells here. Hey, not bad. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> Definitely ghouls. The stalkers have sneak attack, so we need to be wary. Bad. Ember is actually doing okay. Let's keep these guys spread out, uh, prevent them from flanking. Ghouls were immune to cold. The path to the final floor is clear. Missed me already. Oof. 24 DC. Maybe I did something wrong here. Well, we tried. Got pretty close, too. That's fine, though. I'm actually pretty sure that would have just created another um, area we could shed excess corruption. So, not something we really needed. Why did you drag me here, you wench? To mock me one last time? Go on, finish me! Drink my blood, devour my soul! Just get on with it! Let me die at last! 
Staunton lies on the floor, wounded, and glaring at Monago with loathing as she leans over him. He's rasping, struggling to speak through his cut lips. Staunton, light of my life, don't be so silly. I could never hurt you. I brought you away from the battle to save you. My love, you don't belong in this grubby city where everyone hates you. Come away with me. You know I have always loved you. The Lolitu caresses his face, and the soft glow of a healing spell closes his wounds. You lying filth! You have the gall to say that to my face? But it was you. It was all you. You're the reason I lost everything. You're the reason why everyone despises me! So it was me who brought shame upon you in front of the people you called friends? It was me who mocked you year after year, spat on you, forced you to do dirty, demeaning work like you were a drudge, and not the bravest of knights. No, it was all of them, the Crusaders and their witless queen. If you remember the day Dresden fell, I asked you to be its new ruler. You refused, of course, you and your principles. But look what's become of you. They talk about love, but they are really talking about a terrible disaster, like an earthquake, or a hurricane, or a shipwreck. Perhaps there is another kind of love. But in my experience of love, if it doesn't feel like you've been through a shipwreck, then it's not worthy of the name. Guys, I feel like this is not the best time for this discussion. Um, okay, so this is new. Uh, this is clearly the beginning of Darren's new romance quest. And you know what? I am going to politely pass on that. Nothing against Darren. I am just not looking to start any relationships with anyone in our current party. Thank you. I'm sorry to say that there is truth in the demon's words. The Crusaders really have treated him terribly. I say this as a criminal who has been forgiven by other knights of Iomade. But like all demons, she has built a mountain of lies and deception upon this one grain of truth. My offer still stands. Come away from here, my love. You will rule Dresden as a king, and I will be your queen. Hmm. What are you hoping for, demon? Staunton is loyal to the Crusader cause. He won't succumb to your lies. There's no bigger lie in all of Galarian than your beloved Crusades. It's sensual delusion encouraged by your disgraced queen. The only thing that is true is my love for you, my darling. <clears throat> Staunton gets to his feet and looks at the eyeless Lolitu with a strange expression on his face. A mountain would sooner weep than this grim dwarf, but tears now well in his eyes. Dearest, it's all right. I'm here. We'll never be parted again. Let's go. Come! Get back! Ah! Grasping his blade, Staunton slashes at Monago's eyeless face, and with surprising agility for one of his stature, flees up the stairs. Curses! Ugh. Stubborn as a mule. Never mind, my pet. Never mind. You won't get far. You will kiss this scratch and beg for forgiveness. You will be mine, holy eternally and willingly. The Lolito runs a hand over her face, staining her delicate fingers with blood. Staunton, I cannot help but notice that you have not in fact run up those stairs. You are standing right in front of us. I don't think that event fired the way it was supposed to.
Okay, you know what? Um, that makes me slightly nervous. This is a notoriously buggy part of the previous build. And we are coming up on the hour mark, so I'll tell you what. Let's hit the pause button for now. I'll set up some backup saves, make sure we're prepared just in case things go off the rails. And uh, I'll give you guys a couple of days to lob feedback at me about those level up decisions. And then we will pick up here next time. We are right on the cusp of wrapping up Act 1. We've just got a lot of narrative stuff ahead of us. If I try to cram all that stuff in now, we're looking at like a 90-minute uh, video. So we'll just save that for Episode 30. That way we can wrap up Act 1 and jump straight into Act 2. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official social media feeds, or the official store pages. And if you'd like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things, or maybe even check out the Patreon. Links are in the description. Just get on with it. Let me die at last. <laughs> <laughs>